Atlanta. Fast. New. Moving. A city that won't stop. Sits in the heart of the South. In the core of stock car racing country. Best place in the world for a stock car race. South on the expressway. South to the track. South to Atlanta International Raceway, where a race, the race, is starting right now. The world's most famous stock car drivers peel off in the order they've earned. Six cars parade proudly before a record 55,000 fans drawn from all over America to this oval magnet. Parade speed is death to these cars tuned to race over 120 miles per hour. Every driver is impatient to floor his pedal. From the pace car, you can see their faces, the faces of the impatient crowd, the faces of the cars grinning at you. Begun and your heart is in your throat. Banjo Matthews Pontiac 02 jumps to the front. The cars bunch up, jockeying for the lead. Bobby Johnson Pontiac 72. Fred Lorenzen in 428. David Pearson in Pontiac 3. Cotton Owens in Pontiac 7. They all spurt to the front, only to be passed. Stacy blows a tire and rams the rail. That blowout and a broken tie rod put him out of the race here in the second lap. Now in our camera car, right on the track, we pass the main grandstand and speed into the first turn. High up on the second turn. Down the back stretch. Up on the third turn. GC Hunt blows his Dodge engine and goes into a spectacular skid. Two other drivers barely miss him. After only six laps, Hunt is out. Bobby John 72 grabs the lead. Runs close, too close for comfort. Now watch a rare shot of an accident from beginning to brutal end. Bunky Blackburn in Ford 9 blows a tire, loses control, spinning, spinning into the guardrail. The yellow flag is out, so is Bunky Blackburn. Alive, safe, but out.
Herman Bean and the camera car is in trouble. Bobby John holds his lead, but David Pearson three and Joe Weatherly eight stay on his tail. Hold it! Larry Frank four six loses it on the first turn. Spins into the second. Into Rex White four. Jim Pardo fifty four. George Green one. Wow! Frank's in a bad spot up on the rail, backwards. The wreckers pour into the area and pull out what's left. Body work and Pardu goes back into action. Rex White's crew racks up miracles and puts their Chevy back. Larry Frank is glad he's alive. His car is one of five Fords trying for the trophy today from the Holman and Moody stable in Charlotte. Ralph Moody leads his crew as they bring Frank's Ford back to life. The green flag says go. But the sky says maybe not. It's clouding up. A few drops of rain. NASCAR throws out the caution flag. Rain and racing don't mix. So you wait it out. The crowd and the pit crews take a break while drivers grind out spirals on the track, slowly drying it off. Rain makes you think back, back, back to Charlotte, North Carolina, where the Holman and Moody team have been grooming their Ford since March for this race. Two out of three of this year's top races have been won by Holman and Moody Fords. Incredible, because everybody thought Pontiacs would win every race. All eyes were on Holman and Moody and their five Fords. With Fred Lorenzen, Marvin Panch, Larry Frank, Nelson Stacy, and Elmo Langley at the wheels. Those cars were protected like Fort Knox under NASCAR guard through two abortive attempts in March to run this Atlanta race. Rain stopped each try. But it didn't stop Holman and Moody. They worked all the harder to bring in a winner here at Atlanta. The faces of the NASCAR inspectors tell you they wouldn't stand for any foolishness. Anybody who wanted to win this race had to do it with a true stock car. He had to qualify at the time trials with the rest. In the days before the race, every driver took his car on the four hottest laps of his life in Atlanta. 
Cotton Owens in his number seven Pontiac exceeded 138 miles per hour on a four lap average. But it was Banjo Matthews Pontiac O2 who took the pole position in the car he personally built in service in Asheville, North Carolina. The Atlanta race drew the kids. One reason was the question and answer clinic before the race. Youngsters got a chance to ask drivers like Fred Lorenzen about their lives as stock car race drivers. Men from the automotive industry were surprised at the technical knowledge of these kids. Autograph hounds got what they came for. who came early watched open mouth as crews prepared their cars for the race. Toy wagons were standard pit transportation. The men worked night and day. The engines had to be right. The cars had to be right. By this morning, the cars had qualified and were ready for final NASCAR inspection and fueling. association seal went on the car, you knew it was honest and safe. Crowds poured into this modern arena, centered in 500 acres of Georgia. Fans got a wealth of entertainment and refreshment as the minutes ticked off before the race. Charlotte's crack police motorcycle team dazzled the crowd. race went into its first 84 laps. Now the track is dry again. Scorers carefully check car positions. The word goes out and the green flag flies. Joe Weatherly eight leads. Yarber 492 blows his engine. Roscoe Thompson's Mercury starts to spin out, but he gets control. Now Fred Lorenzen 28 zooms to the front and takes charge. Fred now looks like Holman and Moody's one best chance at the cup. Wait! Banjo Matthews pulls ahead of Lorenzen and takes command of the race in this 108th lap. The two close friends begin a two-car duel. cars pair up to draft. Drivers know they can save fuel and pick up speed by drafting, riding right on another car's tail. Cars 
are spreading out now. They lap each other, so you've got to be sharp to spot the real leader. Right now, Banjo Matthews 02 has it and intends to keep it. Roberts is in sixth place in pits. The Matthews Lorenzen duel gets hotter. The two men are moving around the track like two eyes on a giant face. Their pit crews couldn't be happier. The track is dry, the track is fast. Speeds between cautions are running over 130 miles per hour. Tom Cox's number 60 Plymouth breaks its axle and Cox goes to the shower. Johnny Allen's Pontiac transmission fails and he's through. Ralph Earnhardt's transmission is gone. Now drivers must make their scheduled pit stops for fuel and fresh tires. Lee Petty directs his son Richard's pit stop. Petty's Plymouth just can't seem to get steam in this race. takes the lead momentarily, and then Lorenzen dashes out front. The driver spot clouds over the track in wonder. Pearson 3 starts picking up lost laps. Chevrolet has bad engine trouble. Favorite driver among drivers is little Joe Weatherly in Pontiac number eight in seventh position. The irascible Joe has a chance here in the 156 lap to win the race. Joe blows a tire. He's too close to the rail. He rams it. There's a sad face on this crowd as Joe drags to the pits. There's something mighty tragic about a pit stop you know is costing you the race. Track Banjo Matthews and Fred Lorenzen are burning up rubber and asphalt in a spectacle few stock car racing fans have ever seen. The other drivers become spectators. The lead changes faster than the scorers can tap it. Banjo leads on the back stretch. Fred pulls ahead on the fourth turn. By the time they hit the second turn, Banjo is back in front. The Holman and Moody team can only wait and watch now. Marvin Patch's engine smokes. This pit stop means out of five Holman and Moody Fords, only Lorenzen is left to win this race. These Holman
Bowman and Moody Fords out here today are a new kind of convertible with a bolt-on streamlined top. NASCAR wasn't convinced that they were true stocks and required special ex-members to be welded to the car frames to meet standards. Goldsmith and Pontiac 01 pits. A driver hasn't a chance to do much more than wipe his face, rest his eyes, in a stop lasting less than a minute. Now here's the lineup in this 180th lap. Banjo Matthews 02 holds the lead for the moment. Fred Lorenzen is right behind. Bobby John 72 is third. Fireball Roberts 22 is fourth. Junior Johnson, six, is number five. David Pearson, three, is sixth. One of them is going to win. Ed Livingston is going out with a four that just won't run anymore. The asphalt duel roars toward its climax. But you can't call it all bitter. Not between two men who are like brothers to each other. Track temperature gets hotter. Drivers look skyward. Could it rain again? Twice in one race, could rain suddenly change everybody's hopes and plans for this third Atlanta 500? No time to think. Ralph Moody signals Lorenzen to make his pit stop. If the rains come, the length of the pit stops now will decide the winner. Lorenzen is in. gets tires, yes, and a Coke, and out in 53 seconds flat. Half the sky is black, half is white, as banjo pits. Seconds tick off. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 64, and Banjo is back fighting. Fireball Roberts' pit stop takes 77 telling seconds. The pit stops give Bobby John 72 the lead in this 211th lap. But 40 seconds later, Johns must face reality and make his own final pit stop. With it goes his lead. Matthews and Lorenzen slug it out. They watch the weather in disbelief. Banjo and Fred figure it will rain. They go for broke. Never did they drive so hard as this. 
Lap 213, 214, 215. Lorenzen pulls ahead. Rain, the race is over. Not the checkered flag, but the yellow flag waves over the darkened race area. Fred Lorenzen takes the race. Pop money goes to this 28-year-old native of Elmhurst, Illinois. He gets his official notice and trophy in the press box. And 55,000 head out to tell the folks back home of an incredible Pontiac Ford duel they'll never forget. This is the car that did it. And these are the men who did it. The Holman and Moody team bring home the trophy. Now their score is three out of four. This is the wheel Fred Lorenzen drove to victory. 45 other great drivers had to lose, so Fred Lorenzen could win this Atlanta 500. But there will be more races, more work in the garages, more new automotive ideas in Detroit, in St. Louis, and Charlotte. And these are the faces of the men who will win those races of the future. Men born to the track. Men who love cars and racing and winning. Fred Lorenzen will face them all again.